Well, hello everybody and welcome to a new era of virtual church. New era for me at least, being a father of two humans rather than one. I've been a father of three beings for a while now. One human, two cats, but two humans, that's a whole new level. So bear with me tonight. Let's just see how we get on, okay? I'm sort of, I'm, I'm flying solo at the minute. I've got my producers, uh, who are, by the way, uh, who is uh, Josh tonight. So if they have any issues, please do let Josh Wilson know, and hopefully he'll let me know whether everything is okay. Let's crack on. Let's crack on. Hail the day that sees him rise. Alleluia. To his throne beyond the skies. Alleluia. Now, there were... This is a well-known tune, this is um, Llan Fair. But I've also had a request for another tune, which I don't know. And I thought it would be rather nice to play both tunes, not at the same time. Um, so I'll have the first tune, which is Llan Fair, and the second tune is called Ascension, which might be well-known amongst some of you, but it's not well-known uh, to me. So, as usual, please do let me know if you know it. Please do say hello in the chat. Please do say hello to um, your fellow colleagues. If you're new, um, please do introduce yourselves. Whilst you're doing that, I'm going to put these old sausages to good use and um, play the first hymn. So, hope you enjoy.
the second tune Ascension I didn't know at all uh, is by William Monk, so an English composer. I think it's just been dwarfed by the other tune, if I'm honest, but I don't know quite why, because that tune is pretty good, isn't it? I think actually, it, in some ways, it's better than the well-known tune. I mean, they're both great tunes, but I think I, the, there's something about that second tune which is actually really quite powerful. It's all very high, which I suppose is appropriate for Ascension, isn't it? But anyway, what do you think? What do you think about that tune? It's called, it's called Ascension, um, and it's by William Monk. So, the first tune was um, uh, requested by um, Apurv Nandi, and the second tune was requested by Jim Keim, um, who says, This for me is a lesser known Ascension hymn by Charles Wesley, um, and I would love to hear it played. Well, you just have heard it played. So let's go on now to our second hymn, or already our third tune. Um, Who are these like stars appearing? This is a request from um, a daddy wooer. That's going to be almost certainly pronounced incorrectly. A daddy wooer, W U R A. Um, who are these? Where is it? Come on, don't let me down. There, there we go. Now it's, to, it's just to the tune. I think it's to the tune. He didn't give me um, a. a um, uh, a tune name, um, but it's to the tune, I think, ooh, pronunciation, here we go, um, Zoich mich, Zoich mich, um, and it's been harmonised by William Monk, so William Monk is, this is the second time William Monk has had a mention, because he was the um, composer of the, the Ascension tune just now. So sorry I wasn't here with you last week, I was busy being a father to a two-day two-day-year-old, two-day-old little girl. And she's just wonderful. She is wonderful. She's very quiet, apart from when she wants a feed. But then she's not quiet at all. But incredibly, it's very quiet now, apart from the blowers of this organ. So yes, uh, Hugo is being very, um, he's being a good older brother. He's being his typical self, which is a bit of a handful, if I'm honest. Um, but he's been very good. He loves her very much, quite clearly, which is wonderful to see. OK, so let's go into our uh, second hymn tonight. Who are these like stars appearing? These before God's throne who stand. Each a golden crown is wearing. Who are all this glorious band? Alleluia, hark they sing. Praising loud their heavenly king.
great tune there. So thank you very much for requesting uh, that one. Who are these like stars appearing? So those people who, I think some people have guessed already, but we are using Doodle Lounge. But, but, this is the very first time that I'm actually using this particular organ on VC. In fact, this particular organ has never been heard live on YouTube before. This is officially, guys, a world first. What on earth am I talking about? You've all heard Doodle Launch many times before. You've all heard me waxing on about it. Aha, but you've also heard me banging on about the fact that the surround version is coming very soon and that you will be able to buy it very soon. So the good news is that yes, it, it is coming very soon. I can't give you a date because I don't know a date. Um, it could be any day now. The what I'm playing to you now is the version that you will be able to buy from the shop. This is the public version of the organ. Um, and it sounds, the original organ sounded good. Um, and when I, when I loaded it up, well, before I loaded it up, I said to Marion, um, um, who works with Voxus, and to Bert as well, so two of the guys behind the scenes, I said to them, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it but I can't quite see how it's going to be any better than it was. So I wasn't particularly excited. More apprehensive, thinking, hmm, I'm not sure. Can't get any worse. Can't get any better, even. But when I loaded it up, it, it, everything about it is better. So there is a new interface. Um, the rear speakers, the rear surround, has been completely redone, so it sounds even better. Um, and it just feels like, this is, this is what I want as an organist, it feels like a real organ, full stop. So what more, as a, a, a you know, as a, a pipe organist, could I, what more could I want than to have an organ that sounds like a real organ? It's, there we go. So that's it now. I, I always get on my high horse, my stallion, when I talk about this organ, because it really gets me revved up, more so than any other any other instrument I think I've ever played, pipe organ or fake organ. Something about this really gets you going. And uh, I had a guest, one of my organist guests, who's played this organ for you on BIS, um, sat down to play it, and he was sort of improvising. This is the old version of Doodle Launch. Um, sat down to play it, and he was getting a bit a, a bit excited, and then he suddenly went into um, um, whatever it is, you know, the one the um, the bark. So he, and then he played the entire thing just off the cuff from memory, and I registered it for him live. And at the end, he just had he said he had goosebumps all over because it, it sounds so good. Anyway, anyway, let's move on to so Daniel Kubaki's um, hymn. He says. A short Passion Tide hymn by Orlando Gibbons. Don't forget, everyone, Daniel Kibaki is requesting Gibbons over the next few weeks. Um, I love the words of this hymn, let it wash over you, he says. So Daniel this week has requested one of the most famous uh, tunes, uh, famous hymns by Orlando Gibbons. It's Drop, Drop, Slow Tears. And this is really beautiful. It's obviously um, for the season of Passion Tide. Um, due to its, its beautiful words. Only three verses, so I'll play it fairly slow so we can actually really enjoy um, these words and this music and this organ.
Very quiet, that hymn, isn't it? Very quiet. In your deep floods, drown all my faults and fears. Perhaps I should have had the, um, the old 32 in that verse. Nor let his eyes see sin, but through my tears. One of the greats for a passion tide, often sung unaccompanied by the choir as a short motet, actually. That works remarkably well. If you just have, you know, a solo doing verse one, solo verse doing verse one, um, verse two could be SATB, and verse three could be um, solo on top with the SAT, uh, the ATB humming underneath. It works really well like that, actually. Okay, moving on to our uh, fifth hymn tonight. Comes in from Benjamin Yao. Good old Benjamin. Who actually hasn't requested a hymn at all. Well, he has. But he's actually requested an organ piece. Now we're going to have an organ piece. Heaven forbid. That's not really an organ piece. It's played on the organ quite regularly. Um, I think you guys over in the States have it for your graduations. The graduation march, you might call it. I don't know. We don't we don't tend to use it for graduations over here. It is the prelude from the Te Deum. Which if you if you've only ever heard those words out of context, basically there is a, a much larger piece on the text Te Deum Laudamus, we praise thee, O God, by um, Marc Antoine Charpentier. And the, the prelude is quite literally the first movement. And then the rest of it, no one knows. <laughs> Everyone knows the first movement, but no one knows the rest of it. I've, 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 I was, I've done it today. I, I did it a couple of years ago. I was um, the organist. And I was really excited about doing it, thinking, oh, I get, get, get to hear the entire thing at last. But I, I can't remember the rest of it. Charpentier's music is wonderful. I love it. It's, it's wonderful stuff. Um, but this is very memorable. So, let's go. Who was requested this? I've completely forgotten. Benjamin Yao, he says, Earlier today, the 20th of May, I was conferred with the chartered banker status in a ceremony which began with a procession using this piece. Thought of sharing the joy of the celebration with this request. Well, there we go. Chartered banker ceremony. I haven't been to one of those before. Was that was that was it fun? So we've got a read there, we've got a big read there, those reads are coupled together. That should make a fairly exciting sound. Let's get those couplers in the right order. Okie dokie, here goes nothing.
in uh, an arrangement there by our dear friend Noel Rawsthorne. In this rather useful book, which is no longer available, I don't think. Um, so there's no point in telling you about it because you can't buy it. But you can buy variations on a the theme of this. It contains quite a lot of useful stuff, like that. Um, and other stuff as well, you know, uh, arrangements of little ditties by Handel um, and the G string. So you could have it at weddings, you could have it at funerals, or you could have it just as emergency um, in the case you need to play something before a service. You know, it's got a bit of, bits of Cargay Alert in here, a uh, bit of William Boyce, all sorts, and Genopody ra randomly. <laughs> but yeah, so there we go. That was um, actually dedicated just now, I think, to my little Charlotte, celebrating her birth, celebrating the fact that all went well, there were no hiccups, and and all of those positive things. Celebrating the fact that we are not going to sleep again for another few years. <laughs> Okay, so Erin Bruce is up next, who's sent in a request, sent in one of the greatest of English um, hymns, um, which is it's a really well-known tune and um, was heard at the coronation a couple of weeks ago. The hymn wasn't sung at the coronation, but the, the piece from which it comes was Planets by Gustav Holst. Tune, uh, Thaxted, um, has become synonymous with these words. I vow to thee, my country, all earthly things above, entire and whole and perfect, the service of my love. Uh, Aaron says this. It's always been my favourite hymn. <clears throat> it springs to mind as we are in, as we are currently playing Jupiter in orchestra, epic timpani part, apparently. Yes, there is, isn't there? Not sure if that's a good a reason to request a hymn, but I haven't heard it in hymn context for a while. Hmm. Well, Erin, we can fix that for you. Definitely. Now, I've played this before on VC a few times, and everyone watching will know, those people who've seen me play this before, I like to do a crescendo through this piece. So I'll start it quietly and build it up. So I think we should start with the clarinet on the choir, accompanied, come out, it's running away from me, accompanied by the flutes upon the swell, and then all sorts of things after that. Okay, so I vow to thee, my country. Which camera should we go for next, guys? Let's go for a top, a top and a slow zoom in.
wonderful, wonderful words by Cecil Arthur Spring Rice there. A tune called Thaxted, uh, composed by Gustav Holst, uh, not as a hymn. He wrote it uh, very much as a, um, a suite of movements um, called The Planets. And uh, uh, word on the street is that actually Gustav Holst never proved words to be put to his music. A little bit like Elgar, I guess, Land of Hope and Glory. Or did he? I don't know whether El that is true for Elgar, but I think Gustav Holst never really approved the words going to his music. But I think they, they fit rather well. Okay, so now back to Benjamin Yao. Benjamin Yao uh, requested Charpentier a minute ago, and now he's going to have a hymn. Ben always sends in a hymn. And this week he sent him one, um, when my life work, when my life work is ended. When my life work is ended. The tune is called I Shall Know Him. Um, the words are by Fanny Crosby and the music is by John Sweeney. When my life work is ended and I cross the swelling tide, when the bright and glorious morning I shall see, I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side, and his smile will be the first to welcome me. And the refrain goes, I shall know him, I shall know him, and redeemed by his side, I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him by the print of the nails in his hand. Okay? Good. Let's get on with it.
a beautiful tune. I could see quite a bit of chat going on during that one about Fanny Crosby. So it's good to um, to know there's quite a bit about her that we ought to know about. So I look forward to reading back through the chat uh, later on to see what I should um, what I should be knowing about her really. I think Ian Garden suggested doing another a hymn marathon um, based on her tunes. If they're any good, and then I'm open for ideas, as you know. Okay, let's go on to our next request. Need to get through them tonight for obvious reasons. Uh, Brady Kilman uh, says, "I really want to hear this with all of the stops pulled out to see what it sounded like." Oh, well, that's like um, a red rag to a bull, that isn't it? <laughs> oh dear with me on this organ. Now, annoyingly, it's not actually on the iPad. I've played it so many times, I actually assumed it was on the iPad, but it's not. But luckily, I've played it frequently enough throughout my life that I know, I know off by heart, the number. Is anyone else able to, in any age, tell me, without looking, quickly, what hymn number 146 is. It's, well, it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's uh, uh, um, Brady Kilman's request is what it is. It's Nicaea, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. I played a really wonderful service yesterday, by the way, um, down in uh, Winchester College Chapel. Winchester, Winchester College is a very famous school here in England. I think Eton is probably our most famous school, but then after that, you have places like um, Wincoll, as it's called locally, or, or Winchester College, or simply called Winchester. Um, and it's actually older than Eton, so um, the, the, the chapel was actually um, formed, um, formed, is that the right word? Um, I guess the foundation stone was laid before that of Eton College. And it's, Eton is based on, on Winchester. And I was playing in Winchester last night, I was playing Evensong uh, for a, um, like an old chorister, an old Wickhamists gathering. And honestly, you should have heard the sound they made. There was quite a few of them. So there were six rows, three rows on each side, full of, um, of capable singers. Everyone singing their hearts out, and the organ in there was barely able to keep up. So um, that was fun. And the hymn we had at the end was um, Crown Him With Many Crowns. And that was a lot of fun, actually. It's so nice to play for services like that, where everyone is just really singing and it just really allows the organist to, um, you know, just play properly rather than having just to be so careful all the time because, because of danger of drowning out the choir. There was definitely no danger of drowning out any choir yesterday. It was so much fun. Anyway, here we go. So holy, holy, holy.
What a wonderful tune. What a wonderful hymn. And as I frequently say, that that was the very first hymn I played in public with a live congregation. So that always brings back lots of um, happy memories, anxious memories, nervous memories. So we're getting through them, doing really well. So these are all the pre-requests. I'm just catching up, uh, catching up with pre-requests. Um, going into Carmen, who's requested um, my maker and my king to, to thee, uh, my all I owe. Thy constant goodness is the spring whence all my blessings th uh, flow. Let me just open it on here. So I don't have any more words than that, unfortunately. Carmen, please can you copy and paste the words into the chat so we can see what the um, words are. That's all I'm working with. It's not entirely helpful when playing to a large book congregation of 353. Most churches in this country would be over the moon with that number in the congregation. And the organist is sat here with no words to the hymn. Ah, panic. Carmen Foster, over to you. Quick copy paste. I think there were four verses. Let's get the trumpet out for verse one. Just to give you an idea of the tune. Because I don't know how popular it is. Let me know if you know this tune.
Okay, good one. A common, you didn't really put many words in the chat there. Are you, are you still with us? Did you put the words in the chat? So I asked you to. Mm, no, you haven't. Okay, well, hopefully somebody will at some point. Uh, Bill, add the 16s to the manuals. I don't think I had 16s on at that point, actually. The, those two are the 16 flues on the grate. There's also a 16 foot on the swell and on the choir. Brought those, uh, so the two 16s on the choir. Oh! this organ is. <laughs> okay, Bill Rayty is up next with When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Ooh, to the tune of Hamburg, the ELW. I have that here. It's good job I noticed that because I might have just gone crashing into the usual one, um, uh, 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 Rockingham. A 308 in here. Thank you very much for putting the hymn number down. Bill, that's very useful. I say it's useful. ELW 308 is, O morning star, how fair and bright. Oh dear. Well, we can't have it then. Oh, God. Oh, blimey. You know, I thought you could put the right number down, Bill. When I, so, let's see how I've got it on my iPad. Hamburg, I have got it. Ooh, that's lucky, isn't it? That's lucky. It's this one, yes. Yeah, I completely forgot because I have played this before. I played it back to back with the, the other tune, the English tune. Let's try this. So we've got, we've got a quint five and one third, um, which is useful up the octave. So if I put, pull that on with a four foot flute, with with the raw flute and then with the borden, I play that up the octave on the grate. That's a nice, that's a nice effect actually. Get rid of couplers. Listen to this. This this this, this works well. I think anyway. <laughs>
Yeah, that was the voix zoom in with the tremblant up on the Ressi. Now, to mark the end of the first section, i.e. the end of the pre-requested hymns, we're going to go into a top five. In a moment, uh, requested by our good friend um, Ben. Um, ben Wallace, that is. Um, Ben's been, been in the chat for a very long time and I'm very grateful for his company. But we're going to actually end the um, pre-requests by a request from a Lionel. And Lionel says this. Imagine my, res my response when I first read this. I am a big fan of Handel, and I always love to hear the orchestra accompaniment more than the singing. Okay. I would like to hear the same from the pipe organ. Okay. Can you play the complete book of Handel's Messiah? Well, Lionel, no, I cannot. I have in concert, and I vowed at that point never to do it again. Because it's a bit of a handful. But I thought that we want to play something uplifting tonight because, as you know, there is a new member of the McVeigh clan. And we should celebrate that by singing, by playing, by doing whatever you want to do. The Hallelujah Chorus from the Messiah. And as Bill says, yes, I've dodged a bullet. <laughs> and if I was to play the entire Messiah, I would be finishing it in about three hours time. I think I would be finishing in about three hours time physically. <laughs> So, the Hallelujah Chorus, I think, will um, will just about do, don't you think? Give me a break. <laughs> I have some Coke to get me through it. Zero Coke, by the way, so this is the healthy one. Coke Zero, I mean. Right, let's go for multi-angle so you can see what's what.
indeed. Well, there you go, Lionel. That was not the complete book of Handel's Messiah, as you specifically requested. That was just the complete book of Handel's Hallelujah. So, that's the best bit though, isn't it? <laughs> that everyone knows. It's like saying, Vidor's Toccata. Who, who's that by? What? Who, what? Who's? What's what by? Vidor's Toccata, who's that by? Have you ever heard anyone say that? Someone genuinely asked me, who's it by? Who's it by? Because I thought Vidor's Toccata was the name of the piece. I'm like, oh no, it, it, it's, it's by Frank Bridge. Yeah, Frank Bridge wrote Vidor's Toccata. <laughs> oh dear. Right, let's crack on to our top five now. My favourite part of any VC because it allows me to um, get to know you a bit better. So today's top five, uh, as I've said, uh, comes in from Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace has been a great supporter and a great friend of BIS for, for, for a few years now. Um, and I, I was very grateful to receive his top five. So, let me get the first one ready so we can go straight into it. Where is I in the alphabet? There it is, right. <laughs> so he says, uh, thanks for the opportunity um, for me to tell my favorite hymns. It's a great privilege, over on this side. It's a great privilege to be a regular at virtual church. I think you already have good, clear PDFs of all the hymns, but just in case he's attached a couple. Ben likes to send through high quality scans, you see. Hymns and sacred songs are fundamental to my Christian life. So the theme of my five hymns is pretty straightforward. It's Christ triumphant. Okay, so starting at number five, we're going to have some very familiar words, but I dare I say it, uh, I say this a lot, but then you'll always correct me. Dare I say it, I don't know whether this tune is particularly well known. He says, this is my favourite hymn from the 19th century, Scottish clergyman and hymn writer, Horatius Bonar. Someone correct me. The tune by John Dykes, I can, I can say that, is strangely more popular on this side of the pond. It's strange. So I heard the voice of Jesus say, not this one. That's not the tune we're going to have. We're going to have, um, that's, that one's called Kingsfold. We're going to have a tune called a Vox Delecti, as by John, uh, by John Dykes. It's an F minor before halfway through going to F major, which is interesting, isn't it? So you guys over in America, you watching, you guys watching from over there, is this the hymn that you all know? Let me know.
It's a great tune. Great tune. I wonder whether John Dykes wrote that tune um, for those words. It's possible, you know, because each each verse starts with, I heard the voice of Jesus say, uh, come unto me and rest. Excuse me. Oh, bless me. The verse two is, I heard the voice of Jesus say, behold, I freely give. Verse three is, I am this dark world's light. And then in the third line, verse one is, I came to Jesus as I was weary, worn and sad. Verse two is, I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. Verse three is, I looked to Jesus and I found him my star, my son. So, you know, the words, those two points in the, the tune are very similar throughout the verses. So perhaps John was thinking that the words from I came to Jesus are something, something to celebrate. I don't know, I'm just, um, I'm just completely that's hypothetical. Right, number four in uh, Ben's list. He sent me this as a high quality scan because he knew I wouldn't have it. And I haven't got it. There is this interesting one. This is more of a piano accompaniment, so I have to play it on Torgan in the best way that I can. It's Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double claw, uh, cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power. A lot of Lenten Passion Tide requests coming through tonight for some reason. Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. Just merely an observation. Right, let's let's um, get some nice soloy stops on the great or the grand org, as it's called on this organ. Okay. Rock of Ages cleft for me. I think the tune might be called um, New City Fellowship. I can't confirm that. It might be called that. Let's have a listen to it, shall we?
gorgeous tune that one, isn't it? Different to the one that we um, might often have um, for those words. I'm just trying to think um, what the tune is called. Redhead. So that was number four in uh, Ben's list. Number three is a well-known one, and this is a, this is another Lent and Passion Tide one. I don't know. Are, are we? Have I been in a coma or something? Are we back in Lent already? God, I don't think we are. It's too sunny to be in Lent. Anyway, moving on to number three in Ben's list, he says. Oh, actually, I, I should say that Ben, for the previous hymns of this, this is the familiar top lady uh, text set to a contemporary tune written, written by an American songwriter uh, whom Ben knows uh, from Tennessee. It's very popular over there in the States and can be found in many hymnals. Well, I think it does sound vaguely familiar. I think I must have played it when I did my um, ELW Marathon. Perhaps it was um, done during one of those marathons. Number three in Ben's list. It's no secret that this is a VC favourite. It's an amazing seven stanza hymn by an obscure 17th century writer named Samuel Crosman. It's so powerful, especially the final verse. Here might I stay and sing no story so divine. Never was love, dear king, never was grief like thine. This is my friend, in whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly spend. Well, we won't have all seven stanzas or verses. We will have four or five, depending on how the mood takes me. Gorgeous tune by John Ireland. We have actually used most stops tonight already. Use the cor anglais, the clarinet, trumpets down in the choir, the tuba moralis, of course. We haven't used the horn yet. Over there on the grate. Uh, let's start with the corne. Let's bring the tune out on the corne. Okay. My song is Love Unknown is number three in Ben's list.
powerful hymn, isn't it? That words uh, by Samuel Crosman and the words music, sorry, by John Ireland. So that takes us to number three in Ben's list, taking us down now into number two. He says, no team on the contemporary scene matches Keith Getty and Stuart Townend for their rich and poetic texts. And this song is the best of all. During the pandemic, I went back to this song over and over again. It's a well-known one. It is a, it's it's one, of the, one of their best. Thank you very much, Ian. Sorry, I've, I haven't really been keeping an eye on who's been donating, but those of you who have been donating tonight, thank you uh, very much for that. It's really appreciated. Obviously, I wasn't here last week. Um, I had a little a week off, which uh, over here in England we call paternity leave. Um, so your, your donations this week are especially appreciated. So we've got uh, Tim and Lucy Cook, Natalie Richards, uh, uh, Mar uh, Margot, Carmen, Gregory, um, uh, Baba, Baba Whaley. You've joined, oh, you joined Percy Whitlock. Thank you very much and welcome. And Ian for your 20 just now. So thank you very much. Okay, In Christ Alone is number two in Ben's list. In Christ Alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. So on. I hope my eyes are going to work in this because this copy that I managed to find online is bizarre. Everything's square rather than circular. Even the clef, the, the, the treble clef is not, uh, it is not smooth. Oh, I'll show you. Why is it like this? What is going on with this particular edition? Was that a, is that a, a, a style of, um, engraving that never caught on. I'm not surprised. <laughs> anyway, let's go. In Christ Alone by Keith Getty.
that was in Christ alone my hope is found from the tune Keith Getty and Stuart Townend well this takes us up to Ben's number one and if you're listening very carefully uh, to the introduction of Ben's top five you'll probably work out what it is because Ben says that hymns and sacred songs are fundamental to my Christian life so the theme of my five hymns is pretty straightforward it's Christ triumphant he says this hymn is arguably the finest contemporary hymn that I'm familiar with certainly the finest in traditional form just an incredible expression of praise every time we sing it in the congregation we raise the roof well let's not raise the roof here because it's nice to have a roof actually particularly the climate we have over in this country but let's um, blow off some of the cobwebs Let's not wake Charlotte up. Um, in fact, this is the first time I've done a VC whilst she's been here, so she'll be getting used to the organ. It is, of course, a Christ triumphant, ever reigning Saviour, Master King, Lord of Heaven, our lives sustaining. Hear us as we sing, yours the glory and the crown, the high renown of the eternal name. To the tune quitting power of course so five verses um, by Michael um, Sarward or Sayward um, five verses plus the refrain are you ready to rumble let's go let's go let's go let's go
fabulous. Well, that takes us to the end of um, Ben's list. That was number one. So let's recap what we had. We had, uh, I heard the voice of Jesus say at number five before going into Rock of Ages, cleft for me at number four, being pipped by number three, My Song is Love Unknown, wonderful tune there by John Ireland. Number two, not quite making it to number one, was In Christ Alone by Keith Getty and Stuart Townend. And number one this week, number one is Christ Triumphant, Ever Reigning by, um, well, called, tune is called Gwitting Power. And that was number one in Ben's list. So thank you very much, Ben, for sending uh, the list through and for giving us a little bit of context around why you've chosen those hymns and a little bit of um, a little sentence or two about each hymn as well. As always, if you would like to send in a, uh, a, a list of uh, to your top five hymns, just like Ben has done, please do send it through to Virtual Church at Beauty and Sound dot co dot uk and i will get around to playing it at some point in the future it can be a top list with any type of hymn it could be for any season perhaps not christmas over the summer period but it could be just as um, ben in fact exactly as ben has said here this this top five list here is um uh, to do with, with to do with Christ being triumphant he says the theme of my um, five hymns is Christ triumphant so it doesn't need to be your top five hymns ever it could just be your top five to do with a certain thing so you could have um, send me more than one top five so are people who have sent me in top five already you could send me another top five to do with something else so keep them coming I have a few in the backlog for the next few weeks but I love seeing the emails coming in with top five in the subject please send them through right now we're going to go into the session where I hand over to my very able producers or producer tonight it's Josh Wilson Caroline is somewhere I don't know where Caroline is and she's uh, she's not in here anyway because uh, little little girl will probably not take too well to the organ so let's have a look where are we going to go first uh josh so i think tim and lucy cook have asked for um how shall i sing that majesty um to the well-known tune kofen and that is a really great tune isn't it let's have this uh, tim and lucy um uh, uh, what did you let me look over on this side of the screen uh, you, you say at Andrew's request and appropriate to our current location can you uh, play how oh, shall I sing that majesty okay well I can yes um, give me a little bit of context around that please and um, I will as I'm playing it, and I'll, I will look up at the chat, which is right there, and I will wonder to myself why this hymn has been requested. So, this hymn I like to play. This hymn is always just, I imagine this hymn being sung in a big cathedral, with a big congregation, making a big sound. So, I will play it thus. Fan.
much fun. It's a great hymn, isn't it? Right, so going into a request from Natalie Richard. Thy hand, O God, has a guided to the tune Thornbury. I think it might be on the iPad. Thy hand, O God, has guided thy blood from age to age. Wow, I just saw a flash of red on my screen. Look at that. Wow, thank you very much. Baba Wali. And there's just there were two reds on the screen. Uh, towards a strong cup of coffee or tea for late night performance. Uh, a strong cup of coffee is definitely what I need. <laughs> oh, it's disappeared. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> that was quite a lot. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Uh, and Richard Widdicombe. Thank you very much for for your donation as well. Anyway, let's go into Thy Hand, O God, has guided.
So that was a bit of Thornbury there for Natalie Richards. Thank you very much, Natalie, for your quid. Um, going on now to Carmen Foster. Um, Lord, I would own thy tender care for Charlotte Celia. An email has been sent to Richard. Has it now? Well, let's have a look. See if I can fire up my email. Has an email been sent to Richard, or are you just saying that? Josh will sort me out, I'm sure. Uh, well, there's no email. There's an email from my board, a broadband provider, an email from Arundel Cathedral, three emails from Arundel Cathedral, an email from somebody saying congratulations for the baby, an email from somebody about yesterday, an email from Doodle Launch, from somebody in Doodle Launch, but no email from Carmen Foster. How curious! What are you? What do you want me to play? I don't know what that is. Why is it? Am I, doing, am I doing something entirely wrong? I don't know what's going on. No, no it's not. There we go. It's just come through now. <laughs> there we go. Thank you very much, Car uh, Josh. Got it. Right. Lord, I would own thy tender care and all thy love for me. The food I eat, the clothes I wear, are all bestowed by thee. The tune is called um, St. Leonard. Music is by Smart, as in Henry Smart. He wrote some pretty epic organ music, you know, Smart, uh, and choral music as well. It's very, it's very old-fashioned and very out of date. It's just very Victorian, Victoriana type of heavy, stodgy stuff. But actually, it's actually rather exciting. There's a great setting of um, the can evening, evening Canticles by Smart. I think, I think in B flat, um, which starts. I think it starts with the tuba. The mag it's very it's just completely over the top it's utterly ridiculous but it's brilliant fun uh, and th that person wrote this hymn tune is why i'm telling you that we're not going to use the tube for all of us in this because it feels like it's a bit big for this tune that's coming from me uh, let's get but let's have a mixture let's have two mixtures actually just keep you happy
And yes, Erin, if you um, want to l l hear the organ, the wonderful organ of Chichester Cathedral, it is indeed on BIS. I think all you'll need to do on YouTube is search for um, the Chichester Cathedral organ recital or something. Uh, it should come up. Um, Tim Raval plays a really, really good programme. And the organ sounds utterly fabulous. Really fabulous. It's one of those um, underrated um, overshadowed organs because it's not a particularly large organ. It's a full manual with a tuba and all sorts of bells and whistles on it. Um, but it's just it's just overshadowed by the likes of Salisbury and other places like that. But it's a, w a really wonderful organ. A really wonderful. Cool. Come on. There we go. Thank you very much for sending in your twenty dollars. Very kind. Tim and Lucy Cook gave a little bit of context as to why they requested Cofan. Our son Andrew is currently in hospital um, after emergency surgery to correct fluid on his brain. Ah, Josh, I was just reading that. You just deleted it. <laughs> but, uh, you got, anyway, you, you got the gist of it. Um, so it, it was played for um, their son, which that's very sad. Very sad, but hopefully, hopefully, the procedure is going well, and um, we'll have a positive outcome. Thoughts and prayers are with you. Okay, so let's go on now. Where are we going to next? And so we've had that one. We've got a request in from Lee Dunners. Is Lee in? <laughs> That's amazing. Lee, how are you, my friend? I've not seen you for ages. Where are you? What, where, you've disappeared off the face of the planet. Come down and see me. Come down and see me. You've got to come and see this organ. It's amazing. And come and see the family. Um, right. What have you asked for? Four one five to the. Um, Tune Cuddesdon. All right, well, let's have a look. Four one five. Yeah, this ancient and modern hymns for refreshing worship. <laughs> oh, what a tune! Yeah, we we like this tune here on BIS. We like this tune a lot. This, this always reminds me of university because um, at uni, um, this was the this was the congregational Gloria, so we sang this every almost every week um, in the Eucharist. Whenever there wasn't a choir singing, the congregation would sing um, a couple of settings, and this was always a Gloria. So I I always think of playing in chapel whenever I play this hymn. It's a wonderful tune. It's glory in the highest to the God of heaven and peace to all your people through the earth be given. Obviously it's a paraphrase on the um, Gloria in Excelsis Theo. Uh, the tune is called Cuddesdon. It's by William Harold Ferguson um, and the words are by um, Christopher Idle. So in the wonderful, wonderful key of A flat uh, some wonderful G flats in it and modula modulations to B flat minor and that sort of thing. And it's a good one. Yeah, Lee, keep in touch, won't you? I feel like it's been years since, it's, since I saw you. Right, let's go there. That's half that. I need to get an organ voluntary. What shall I play for an organ voluntary? Anyone have any ideas of what I might play? Nothing too difficult, please. Maybe you grow at grade, grade three or four standard. <laughs> Given how much, how much sleep we've had over the past week or two. <laughs> Not much.
Great, thanks Lee for sending that one through. That's a great hymn. That is, I think that is one of my favourite hymns. That's really fab. <laughs> E flat minor with a added major sixth from the bass. That best bit, isn't it? Fabulous tune. Keep in touch, Lee. I'll give you a text. If you don't text me, I'll text you. Right. What are we going to do next? Have we had any anything? for an organ of all tonight. Nothing, no request for an organ voluntary. Well, maybe the congregation should walk out in silence then. Oh, that's, so last night I had to play, um, uh, as the uh, organ voluntary after even song, but specifically only the Takata. And it was, it felt rather strange just playing that for two reasons. Um, because the last time I played it was, I did it 81 times back to back, sat here in an organ marathon, killed me. Um, and the second reason is it just feels a little bit sudden to finish there. But, you know, who am I to, um, uh, to, to question authority? That's what I was, um, that's, th those were the orders. So I've had a couple of um, ideas here. A tuba tune. Lang. Yeah, could do. Uh, Paul Fay's festive postlude, I don't have that. Wacket um, Auf by Bach. Is that by Bach? Don't say, don't say the Rager Wacket Auf, because I've no chance. I've done the fugue before though. Do be do 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 be do be do 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 do. Those of you who know that piece will know that motif if you subject. Um, you can send in a, a pipe organ cover for Thomas's the tank engine. Oh, that would be epic. That would be really cool. Oh, we should arrange that for organ, like a really proper, like hardcore organ piece in the style of Max Rager, but actually on Thomas Tank Engine. Forget all of these very serious chorales that he used. Fuck it, Alf. You don't need to write a, a big or a choral fantasy on that. Write it on Thomas Tank Engine. That would sell in, in huge quantities. Yes, Ian, you did. Yes, no, I haven't mugged any of it up yet. But I will. I will, I will. Jim Forsyth, uh, the Berserkers from the Viennes, 24 PS. Yeah, I could do that. Not, it's not to hand, I don't think. It's nice. I, I can probably find it online. He <laughs> Garrett, yes, the, um, um, the March, uh, the, uh, the Magi March, with that tinnitus inducing top B. I don't know about that. Uh, right, well, let's have a look in my, on my, uh, on my e-pad for anything that you've been requesting then. See what I can whip up with, at sight. Why do I do this to myself? Why do I do this to myself? Thank you very much, Katrina. <laughs> That's very kind. Um, Howls. Yeah, Bill, I, I love that one. But it just doesn't really work on this organ. This, it's, this, this, I don't think this is a particularly um, as adept as it is at doing all repertoire. I just think for Bach, the, it's, it, the, the acoustic is too big. I mean, I could do, if you want me to play that, I, I, I could absolutely play that. It might be a, bit, a little bit slapdash, but <laughs> that's what we do here on BC, isn't it? Slapdash. Um, 
I'm going to give you the um, Dubois Carter. I played that the other day. And you can play that for you if you like. Oh, Ian has just even said it. Um, handle a, a la hornpipe. I could do that. Definitely do that. Um, and Dubois. Someone else has said Dubois. Philippe has said Dubois. Okay. Well, let's have then. I've still got it set up, or have I wiped it in disgrace? In disgust, even. I think it's there. Is that it? That might be it. Yeah. Actually, I did notice when watching it back, I had a wrong. I had a rogue piston out at the very end. I, so on, on the final line, I accidentally, the final two lines, I accidentally have quiet great on. And on the choir is the tuba moralibus, which didn't mean to be on. So that didn't, that was a bit of a, a, a blunder. So I'll take that off for now. Okay, so we've got a couple of pieces then. A couple of pieces for you. A couple of uplifting pieces. Um, both of which I'm going to play for Charlotte. In fact, yeah, Charlotte's, but all of us. All of us to celebrate life. I think let's celebrate each other. Let's just celebrate everything that we do, because we all, we all play a part in this wonderful world. We all contribute to it. I play the organ on a Sunday night for you, but you do your thing during the week. I'm sure you do lots of weird and wonderful things. So let's celebrate everybody. So. So Hornpipe to begin with by Handel, and then we'll go into um, the Dubois Toccata. Please do chat away. Please do chat away. Um, and in fact, I know the numbers are going down because people are probably going to bed, but just give me a plus one and your location. Oh, I'd love to see where you are in the world and of course who's listening. Hope you enjoy.
quite a lot of notes to get through in that. Well, that was the um, Takata by uh, Theobor Dubois from the um, Duse pieces. So the, the, the French organists compose, they, all, they, they like to compose a number of pieces, like Longley composed a sept piece, uh, sept PS, uh, VN, obviously the 24 um, pieces in freestyle. Um, uh, Dubois did the Duse pieces, PS pieces, Jigou did the Dis, P.S. I'm sure there are lots of others, aren't there? Um, maybe it was just the, 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 the thing to do. You weren't considered to be a serious French organist unless you'd written a set of organ pieces with a name, with a number before. The title, I think they were probably trying to outdo each other. Who, who could write the most pieces? Anyway, so that draws a close to tonight's virtual church. Thank you all very much for your donations, for your company, for your chat, for your good humour, and for sticking with me. Um, all of those things are really appreciated so much. Um, um, I thank you for your well wishes, by the way, um, um, around with Charlotte, uh, on email and messages, um, comments, had, had, had lots, uh, and we both really appreciate them so thank you very much for those um, we will introduce her in due course I think <clears throat> the first time Hugo appeared on BIS I believe uh, was for the Drufle Veni Creator choral variations when the um, the now infamous Nonce organ was released I, I put the first video online uh, of those three play variations played on that sample set with Hugo in the sling. Do you remember that? And Caroline was sat on the bench here singing the plane song. Um, so perhaps if you want a little bit more BIS, you can search out that particular video. I quite like that video. I'm quite I'm proud of it. Um, but we'll, we'll do something with little Charlotte at some point in the future. So hopefully we'll be online next week. Um, child care permitting of course um, so until then um, I will say a cheerio look out for uh, uploads in the week by the way I'll be putting on more uploads on in the week along with some news very soon good night all you take care and as always you stay safe good night or should I say cheerio <laughs>